Welcome back to another episode of Grow. I'm your host, Desarte Yarnway, Head of Community at Altruist. We've been getting a lot of questions about compliance and how advisors can feel confident with their compliance efforts. And for that, we have Max Schatzel joining us today. Max, how you doing? I'm doing great, Desarte. How about you? I'm doing very well. Thanks for joining us here on Grow. I see you all the time on Twitter talking about compliance efforts, and it always gives me something to think about as I try to make sure that my firm is ethical, legal, and compliant. So before we jump into the questions, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so my name is Max. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Stark & Stark. I practice exclusively in the area uh, of representing investment advisors, broker dealers, uh, private investment companies and various financial professionals in this industry. And so, uh, you know, we, we spend a lot of time working with advisors who, you know, want to go independent, want to start their own firms, want to leave a larger firm and start their own firm. And so we, we help these advisors do, you know, everything from day one to make sure they're operating, you know, properly, ethically, and in compliance with you know laws and obligations of an investment advisor. So Max, I'll tell you this: at the end of the year, right, advisors are always scrambling to register their firms, get their ADVs in check, um, just so they can focus on the work during the new year, right? And we're at the the beginning or, or the first or second quarter of this year, right? What can advisors do to make sure that they're fully compliant um, and they can just focus on on their jobs, which is serving their clients? Yeah, that, so there's a lot of different things that advisors can be doing to making sure they're, you know, 100% compliant, um, you know, and, and the, the one easy thing, right, is to hire someone trusted, uh, reputable, who, who really understands and knows compliance and will, will really look out for your interests and make sure you're doing everything you need to be doing under the law. Um, you know, obviously that, you know, that isn't for everyone. I, I totally understand that and appreciate that. A lot of people like to do it themselves. Um, you know, and, and in that case, I think you just need the time and, and the energy to, to really want to do things the right way. Um, you know, and so it's, it's not impossible to do this yourself. It's always a constant trade off between, you know, is this a great use of my time? Can I use my time better? Um, is my time more valuable elsewhere, right? In business development or, you know, servicing clients or, or, or do I want to put in the time and effort on compliance? And so, uh, there's a lot of different varying thoughts there. And so, you know, it's up to every individual advisor to make that choice. So I know that you see a lot of cases, right, with advisors, and they're probably scrambling, trying to take care of compliance while doing the business development stuff, while doing investment management. But what are some common mistakes that you see from advisors as they try to figure out this compliance thing? Yeah, there's a lot of mistakes. I'll be honest with you. You know, we, we see a lot of them, uh, you know, some more serious than others. The, the low hanging fruit, I would say, is advisors who have policies and procedures who, who just don't follow them or, or, you know, aren't doing what they say they're doing. Um, you know, that's probably the most common thing that we see. And I think it's probably the most commonly cited deficiency during exams as well. Um, you know, an advisor just says they're doing one thing, they're not doing it, or, you know, they, they say they're going to be doing something and then they don't do it. Uh, you know, the, those are the really, really easy situations for advisors to to identify, to uncover, to avoid, and and to make sure that they're you know not not getting in trouble in that sense. Um, so that that's definitely one, the the biggest one. So by that you mean everything that they're putting in their ADV, right? In terms of how they're billing, how they're archiving things, they need to be doing that to make sure that when the exam, right, or or the audit comes, they're able to show and account for everything that they're doing. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I was mostly referring to policies and procedures manuals, but I, I certainly would agree that, you know, that the ADV is the, the most important regulatory filing for most advisors. And there's quite a bit of liability that's associated with making a materially false filing. And so advisors should be really, really, you know, careful before they file those documents and when they amend them. Absolutely. So as it pertains to that, let's stick right there. Um, audits, right? What's a way or what are ways that advisors can best prepare for an audit by their state auditor? Mm -hmm. So for, for state audited firms, I think, uh, you know, the, the good news is one, you're probably not going to be examined quite as frequently, um, you know, as a state registered firm, you know, the, the level of resources that these state 
securities boards have is, you know, it's a lot less than the SEC. And so, you know, you, you might go an entire career without actually being examined by a state securities board. Um, but if that were to come, right, if you're to, to get examined, the, the best way to prepare is to really understand your compliance program, um, you know, to, to, to not guess, to, to really learn it, to learn your compliance manual. What does it say we do? You know, what does it say we don't do? How do we service clients? Um, you know, you, you just really have to own the compliance program to, to prepare for, for an examination. Awesome. Now, advisors are starting to create their own narrative, right, by creating their own content and uh, making podcasts, things of that nature. Um, what, what's your best advice for archiving or all of the new regulations that are coming out surrounding advisor marketing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a great question to start today. And so the, the reality is we're living in this sort of middle, middle world right now um, before the new marketing rule is going effective. Uh, and so we're operating under this old regime where, um, you know, I think any podcast is, is viewed as an advertisement. And so they, they should be viewed as such. I think they are that, right? You know, mo most people are podcasting to grow their network, grow their brand, grow their image. Um, and so you're looking at these, you know, these advertisements through the advertising rule lens and you, you need to make the decision, right? You know, is anything we said, is anything that was asked or, you know, answered, is any of it false or misleading? And if so, I think you, you really got to do a job at, at trying to edit that content out before you publish, um, you know, and if, if, if it is, potentially misleading even. I think you want to, you know, try and go back and include some disclaimers to, to cure up that confusion if need be. No, absolutely, Max. Well, my, my last question for you is with this new year coming, right, um, with new administration coming in, is there any trends or things that you think advisors will have to be concerned about um, as we go forward throughout the course of the year? Uh, it, that's a good one. I, I, as far as trends, I'm not so sure there's there's going to be a market difference for, you know, solos and small advisors out there. Um, you know, even for larger advisors, I wouldn't expect, you know, the exam priorities and the way examiners operate and enforcement operates in this area to change very dramatically. That said, the current standard's pretty high for examinations and enforcement, right? I mean, they don't take this lightly. They don't take it seriously. If you messed up, you know, the exam staff is going to expect you to correct it or they're going to refer you to enforcement. Um, you know, and those are things that, you know, really can hurt your brand, hurt your company, hurt your bottom line. And so they're definitely things you, you do want to avoid. Um, but in our space, no, I, I don't think we're, we're expecting any sort of like new or dramatic trends for, for advisors. Max, you are a wealth of information. Um, keep sharing those gems on Twitter and through serving your clients, where can people find you if they need any information or they just want to follow your, your input on markets and on uh, compliance? Absolutely. So the best place to find me, honestly, is probably on Twitter at Advisor Council, Advisor with an E. And then, uh, you know, I also have a blog as well, advisorcouncil.net, same, same spelling, same pronunciation. Um, and I just want to confirm, yep, advisorcouncil.net. And uh, you, you can find me on there. Awesome. Well, Max, thanks again for joining us here on Grow. And thank you all for watching. If you want to catch up with all of the episodes that we've been putting out, feel free to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And also feel free to subscribe to our network at altruist.com slash grow. I'm your host, Desarte Yarnway, and we'll see you here again soon.